Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at the S&P 500. We're going to pick 10 different stocks from the S&P 500. The reason we will be doing that is because some of you have asked me recently, what would you do if you had 1,500? And I wish, you know, I had this sort of a video um, when I first started because I sh honestly, I have absolutely no idea. I started, I was buying all sorts of companies. I made a lot of mistakes, but alhamdulillah, I have, you know, managed to find the right path at the end. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at each one of these sectors, okay, and then talk about diversification. The reason I talk, we will be talking about diversification is because if you think about it, there are 11 sectors in this um, in the S&P 500, which are the f you know 500 biggest companies in the in the US. Okay, so what happens is you can see tech is heavy. Okay, so the biggest sector is tech. It's 20, you know, 27.6% um, of it is just technology companies. Now, when you're doing your own portfolio, you kind of need to do this type of things and ha basically have your portfolio set up such a way that if, for example, technology companies are selling, for example, what happened in the last three weeks, your basically loss is not a lot. So imagine if you had 50% on the tech companies, what happens to your portfolio? The moment it goes down, that 50% is just going to, you will be losing a lot of money. Okay. Obviously, if you are a long term investor, then you don't have to worry about it. And the companies that you invested are very good companies, with solid companies, you know, blue, blue chip companies. They will be around, so you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to sell in, in panic or whatever. But it's really important to also, you know, sleep well at night knowing that your portfolio is well diversified. So, what they normally say is the analyst and the people that are, you know, in the invested investment world um, is to have about 25%. Basically, you should have more than 25% um, in one sector in your portfolio. So portfolio should have 25% or less in each sector. And individual stocks should not be more than 5%. Now, I didn't know that when I first started and I made a lot of mistakes. And I'll show you right now. Okay, If you look at my portfolio right now, technology is 35%. Because I know a lot about technology companies that I invested a lot in the outside and then consumer stables is stuff that I know about and every time I go to the grocery shop and buy something that basically most likely I will be picking something that belongs to Procter & Gamble or you know Unilever and so on and you can see when it comes to utilities, energies, communication, real estate and financials there are reasons why I don't have this right now and that's one of the things that I'm going to explain to you in a bit so your portfolio should have about 25% from each sector Okay, if possible, okay, because obviously there will be sectors where you can't actually invest because of there might not be companies that are halal or whatever. Um, and also make sure like each company that you have within your portfolio is no more than 5%. Okay, and that's something yeah, basically that you need to work on when you start an investment. So let's have a look at the what I came up with. So what I have done is I put together, okay, about 10 companies so there are some sectors that we can invest in and i'll explain that in a bit but what i'm looking at is the name of the company the price the market cap whether they are overvalued undervalued whether they buy hold sell the dividend yield the annual payout the payout ratio the five-year growth the dividend growth as well like how many years they've been paying how safe that dividend is and then the free cash flow the free cash flow is very important because that is basically the money the company generates to basically use for paying dividend paying for the you know their debt paying um things like for example um research and development so this is really important to have with that free cash flow basically if the company is not generating free cash flow there's no way they will be able to pay their dividend unless they borrow in more debt and that's the kind of company that you need to stay away from okay so now we're going to look at these companies and individual, you know, I'm going to explain each one of these things in turn. So the first company that I would have bought if I had £1,000 or £1,500 to invest in this stock market for the first time is um, Broadcom. Broadcom is a semiconductor company. So they develop 
they design, they obviously supply semiconductors. So they create those chips that go into mobile phones and all sorts of things. Recently, there have been a little bit of bad news, but because apparently Amazon is designing their own chip, which then people are saying, oh, because of that, Broadcom actually supplies to them, and therefore they might actually not make enough profit, maybe in 2025 or on, and beyond after that, whatever. But I'm not worried about that. This is a company that I've actually invested in my, stock, my own portfolio. Now, what you're going to see is when it's under this category here, overvalue, undervalued section, you will see one star to five star. So there's a company called Morning, um, Morningstar. Morningstar basically has a rating star. So what they do is one is overvalued and five is undervalued, basically. That's how it works. And then you've got three, which is fair value. Okay. So currently, um, Broadcom is actually um, trading $475. And market cap of 168 um, billion dollars. At the moment, is overvalued, okay. But Morning uh, Morningstar are very quite harsh on terms of companies, especially with the tech companies. They are very harsh when it comes to their ratings. So I wouldn't worry too much. Even if it's two, I would still buy this company because when you look at um, Yahoo Finance, they are actually a buy at the moment, okay. Their dividend is about 3%. They will pay you about $14.40 per share. So each share that you own, that's how much you will get. They are using about 53%, 54% of their income, of their basically profit or free cash flow or the money that's left after they paid everything else for as a dividend. Okay, so they're paying about 53%, which is good. 61 or below, it's basically is nice. Okay, five years. Can you look at this? 50%, almost 51% in the last five years growth average. That is ridiculous. There's no company out there that's growing their dividend this fast. And they've been doing this for the last 10 years. So currently, it's 67% dividend safety according to this website, which is a um, Simply Safe Dividend. Okay, according to this company, um, basically at the moment, it's 67%. Um, and they have almost... 11.6 billion dollars in cash that they could free cash they could use to pay off that dividend or use it for research and development now this company because they're chip makers they actually have a lot of research and develop they spend a lot of money on their research and development side of things so that's company number one company number two is in the healthcare sector so we've already seen technology this is now healthcare one of the best companies in the healthcare section and one of my favorite is J&J or Johnson & Johnson. They currently trade in $162 and of $434 billion company. They are fair valued at the moment, which is really good to see. They are currently a buy 2.5% of dividend yield, about $4 per share that you own. That's what you get paid. And they're spending about 42% of their basically free cash flow their um, revenue to actually pay the dividend they've been growing about six percent which is quite a bit low but they've been doing this for the fifth 58 years so they are basically a dividend um, aristocrat and then you've got their 99 percent safety they have 20 billion dollars of free cash flow so if you were to invest some money into this company you know they're not going to cut their dividend anytime soon because if they can generate that sort of a um, free cash flow, then what else do you really want? Because that's the money they use to pay that dividend. They're a solid company, $438 billion company, currently undervalued. So again, the only issues with these companies is obviously when it comes to healthcare, there's a lot of problems. If someone takes the wrong medication or something happens, they get sued and they always you know, trials and all sorts of things going on. But if you ignore that side of things and actually invest in the company for the long run, then you won't have a problem with it. All right, so the next sector we're going to look at is communication. Communication has a lot of companies that are in debt, so AT&T and Verizon and so on. So that's why I tried to stay away from that sector at the moment. But the activation um, Blizzard is actually a gaming company and currently trading $95 per share. 71 billion dollar company fair valued at the moment it's a buy their dividend is not a lot okay but they obviously 
trying to grow the company. So this is because they are in the gaming industry. They're actually spending a lot on research and development and creating the games and so on. So if you want to basically communication sector, I've actually, this is on my um, watch list at the moment. I'm waiting and maybe a pullback or something so I can get in into that. So at least I have the communication sector because that's one of the sectors I'm not involved at the moment. Okay. They have been paying their dividend about for 11 years and it's 99%. Like they only spend in about 12% or 13% of their um, income basically to actually pay the dividend. And they have $2.1 um, billion of basically free cash flow that they could potentially spend. So if you're interested in the communication sector and you want to look into it, this is really one, one of the really best companies. You've got EA and then you've got this company. They Just those two are the best out there. If you have any other companies that are in the gaming industry, let me know but the there are a couple of newer ones but i'm not really interested in those i want to i'm interested more of a blue chip companies that are paying dividends so that's all right and let's have a look at the next one is home depot i'm sure i've done videos about this company before um so check out my um, youtube channel so to actually see a bit more but when it comes to home depot they are 300 and um 307 dollars this company was done for a very long time. It was only last basically week or so they've actually gone up. It's $328 billion company. By the way, this company actually, they, they sell a lot of home stuff. So for example, if you're a builder, you're building a new house or you know, you're renovating your house, whatever, this is the place to go. This is the place to go and buy those um, stuff that you need. At the moment is overvalued, uh, but it's still a buy. Their dividends about 2%. They pay you about 6% over six percent basically six dollars sorry um for every share that you own in this company payout is about 12.85 um, percent and their five-year growth is about 20 percent which is quite nice they have been doing this over the last 12 years and 87 percent of dividend safety which is really good and they have 16 billion dollars of free cash flow to cover their dividend to you know invest in the company so when I was doing the research um, and I wanted to find out basically if there are companies out there in the financials um, that are Sharia compliant, it was tough to find any. And Accenture was always one of the companies that come that came to my mind every time I think about the financials and Sharia compliance. I'm, I'm not sure why, but because maybe they develop, um, work with a lot of banks and a lot of financial services, but they actually are an IT company, they're a technology company. So I thought, you know what, let me just include it because I thought, why not? Why not? Because they are a really good company, but they're a little bit overvalued at the moment. Um, it is a buy. Their dividend is not that big, okay? But it's one of those companies that are still growing, okay? They've been around for a very long time. I remember when I was at uni, I actually applied um to this company to see if i can get in for uh work experience but at the time it was the company the way the company was located was quite far and then i had to withdraw my application at the end because i was worried how am i on earth am i going to get there but it's one of those really really good companies if you look you want to look into um they do pay small dividend they have about eight billion dollars in in the bank um they're not in the financials let me make that clear okay they're in the you know technology sector but I always thought this company as a financial company because of what they do and how, what they deal with. Okay. All right. The next sector is energy. Now, I'm not sure if anyone is actually interested in the energy these days. I'm not investing in it. I actually don't know much about it. I don't want to um, because at the moment there's a lot of bad rev out going on. And I'm not sure really if it's going to be around for a long time. Obviously, it's going to be around a long time. But I think the way things are going at the moment... With the renewable energy and everything else that we are um, experiencing at the moment i don't know if these companies will be around for a long time okay and the other thing i don't like as well about these companies a lot of them are in debt so this and obviously utilities they seem to be in debt a lot so i don't really i'm not really interested but if you are interested in the energy sector by far chevron is the best okay but when you look at it and you realize it's basically over $200 billion company or market cap and at the moment is actually undervalued, potentially, even though they've been up for, up for almost $20 in the last month or so, you might still find some value in there. They might keep going up. So in terms of dividends, maybe not, but in terms of maybe capital gains, it might just go up a little bit in the next couple of months. I don't know. I'm not sure about the 
what is happening in the energy sector. I don't really pay too much attention to it. But they've got almost a 5% um, dividend yield. They will pay you about $5 per share. So if you are interested just to get quick cash in the next couple of months, um, maybe for one year and then sell it, then maybe it's a good strategy. But the only problem I have with this company, they have $1.6 billion in cash, in free cash. And look at that. They spending, basically they borrowing money to pay the dividend, which is not good, which is not something that you want to see. Despite whether they've been paying this dividend for 33 years or not, and the fact that there's 65% dividend safety at the moment, I wouldn't honestly buy this company right now. Um, that's my just personal opinion. So if you're interested, have a look at that. Do a little bit more research and see if that's something interests you. All right, next one is industrials and then 3M. 3M is a great company. It's been around for a long, long time. And honestly, if you go anywhere, like any of those of those shops, you will find some products that basically 3M sells. They are involved in quite a lot of things. So um, they develop and manufacture and market various products worldwide, um, like anything to do with safety, um, transportation, elect uh, electricity, healthcare, um, consumer. This, they've got so much going on. So if you're interested, 3M, I own about, I think, 11 shares of this company. So um, I'm really happy with where they are at the moment. They've got about $6 billion dollars um, of free cash at the moment that they can pay the dividend. Their dividend is quite good. It's almost, you know, $6. They grow it every single year. They've been growing this for this for 62 years. Okay. So if you're starting and you're thinking, that, you know, you need a company that's stable, it's not fluctuating, it's not like one minute is, I don't know, $100 and the next minute is $200. This is a company that you could potentially buy and hold for a very long time. They're very reliable and they pay very good dividends, so why not? All right, so the next one is Air Product. This is one of the new companies that I've included in my portfolio. It's just, I think I've included this about, about a couple, just, just a couple of weeks ago. It's already up. Um, I'll tell you one thing about this company. They are involved in a lot of things, so I'm still trying to find out basically a bit more, but it provides, an, um, for example, gases. So one thing I will say to you is the company produces obviously gas and electricity used for industrial purposes, including ship and construction and metal productions. Now, that means nothing to me. I'm still doing a lot more research about this company. I already bought cut two shares um, because they were down a lot lately. So I actually bought a um, couple of more shares of this company. Now, be, be worried. Like, look at this. Look at this. Okay, they only have seven hundred and fifty-five million billion dollars million dollars in the bank at the moment for as a free cash flow. Now, whether they will be well, they will be able to cover um, their dividend or not, I'm not too sure. So I'm still doing a bit more research about this company because there's something that doesn't make any sense. They were they were really good, then there's something happened, and then they kind of gone back up again so i'm doing a little bit more research so inshallah maybe one of those videos i might do another video to share this with you and we'll talk about that but at the moment they are a good company so if you want to you know if, you, if you're interested in the material side of things and you, you know how this company where you are working in that sort of industry and you understand how the company works and what they deliver what they do like a lot of these companies i can tell you what they do but this one is it's a little bit tricky so inshallah i'll get around to it and i'll let you know a bit more so then the next one, I think this is the final one. Okay, we've got two more. Okay, is Prologis. This company is basically the landlord, the Amazon, the landlord of Amazon. Basically, every single warehouse Amazon basically uses, they own it. Okay, so they're in the real estate. Currently, they have got about three billion dollars, and they they are buy a little bit expensive. So maybe you have to maybe wait for pull, you know, pull back a little bit, maybe. Okay, so look into it if you're interested in the real estate and you feel like, okay, maybe I need to diversify my portfolio. This is by far one of the best companies in the real estate because there's so many rubbish companies in there and a lot of them deal with debt and interest and all sorts of crazy stuff. So you might want to stay away from them. All right, the final company in this list is the Procter & Gamble. I own this company. I think I've got about 11 shares. They are obviously the head and shoulders company, the company that sells every single product that is in the supermarkets. Whenever you go and want to buy um, some, you know, grooming stuff, when you're buying anything to do with shampoo or whatever, they provide it. They currently 
trading $134 per share, $333 billion company. They have great dividend, fair valued at the moment, and their payout ratio for their dividend is about $53 and $55 billion. And when you look at the safety and you look at how much money they've got in the bank in order to cover the dividend is absolutely amazing. Okay, and the final thing is utilities. I could not find one single company in the utility section that is actually Sharia compliant. So a couple of things from me, okay? When you see this, please do not just go away and just buy these companies. Do your research. Look at the PE ratios. Look at revenue growth. Look at current assets and current liabilities. Then start looking at the, basically the price. See if this basically trading higher than whatever. Look at whether it's a buy. Look at the dividend payout, um, the payout ratio. Look at how much dividend they will pay. Look at the safety. When you've done all of that, then you can start investing in these companies. So please don't take this as advice to say, okay, um, they've, you know, I've shared this information, so you, you're not going to go away and straight away, you know, buying these companies. So please be, please, please, please be careful. Okay. Um, the final thing I also want to say is. I created this channel so I share my journey. All of the, some of the companies that are in here, majority of them apart from this company here, these two here, and this one here, I own in my own portfolio, okay? One thing I need from you, from everybody, is to write on the comment what companies you own in your portfolio. The reason I'm asking you to do that is, not all of them, just a couple of the best companies. If you have some of the companies that I've shared here, please include it in the comment section. That will help someone else. Like there are companies that I didn't know existed. And when I did a little bit of research, I found out there's, oh, let me go to this sector. By the way, one of the best things you can do is go to each sector and look at the top three companies in each sector. So if you want a technology, go to that section. This is the Vanguard um, ETF. Have a look at the top three. And then if you're happy with some of the companies in there, look into it, whether they should react compliant or not okay so when you're doing those kind of things and basically you're sharing some of your ideas hopefully it will inspire somebody else hopefully it will basically help someone else find out a new company that they didn't know existed they can do the research if they like it then they will invest it and that help obviously will help all of us okay i might learn a couple of things in fact i've learned so much to be honest from you guys just to basically sharing your comments and so on um, alhamdulillah the other day one of the brothers actually mentioned i use trading 212 as my account uh, okay um, and one of the things i was doing it was i was using the invest section and one of the brothers commented and said please muhammad please be careful go and look at the um, one of the brothers from um, Islamic gurus, Islamic finance gurus, he did a basically a, an article where he was basically comparing different um, what are they call different tra um, brokerage. Okay, and he actually spoke about the fact that the the invest section of Trading Two and Two does use basically they lend out your own stocks, the companies that you bought, they lend them out. Therefore, is not Sharia compliant. So I'm so grateful to that brother because I did the research and I found out that was, that actually exists. So we can all learn from each other. So I appreciate your help. And obviously, I wanted you to help others as well. So please comment down the below and just basically just tell us what companies you own. Inshallah, we'll do research if we've never, you know, if you want me to research a couple of companies as well, let me know. I was planning to basically make this video about I don't know, 10 minutes is now 23 minutes. Maybe I'll talk too much. But thank you very much. Please, if you are new to the channel, subscribe, share with your family and friends. I've got another video coming out tomorrow as well. So keep an, keep an eye on that because that will be based on my, basically, I'm going to share my entire portfolio tomorrow and explain to you my plans for basically April, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Take care. Bye.